Hi, I'm Paul Marcel. Recently I took a class with Michael Fortune and we were building his pinwheel table. So this is one of the leg sections and there's three of those that form basically a pinwheel for a small glass top. Now like most Michael Fortune projects, this is tapered in every direction. There's scooped out sides here. This is all curved as a lamination. So it's one of those things where it's really a nightmare to do clamping and do work on. But that's also why this stuff is so nice. So this weekend while I was planing the outside surface and scraping the inside here so I could get it all ready for the glue up, that was before this joint here was glued, I remembered that some people had asked me about this pattern maker's vise, so I thought I would do a review of it now before I get too far on this. Now Michael Fortune had actually recommended this vise for me. I had him come over to my shop and we spent some time tinkering around in here. He recommended that I get this pattern maker's vise as well as a gunstock vise, which is behind me and I'll be doing a review of that after this one here. Now both of these vices work very well with things that are tapered, like these legs. They also handle things that are curved much better than a regular vice, like the one that I had here before, the regular simple quick release vice. So what makes this one so special is that it's based off of the Emirate vice, which was a pattern maker's vice ages ago, very difficult to find now in the used market and very expensive. Then later Veritas made the Tucker vice and was selling that through Lee Valley and that also was very expensive, around $800 range last time I saw one listed. So on the used market, they're much, much higher. Now this one here being made for and sold to Woodcraft is a little under $300 and it often comes on sale. For example, today is Labor Day and there was a 15% off sale that you could have purchased this vice for. So probably the easiest way to show the degrees of freedom is to kind of just start moving the parts around and let you see what they are. Now it isn't a quick release vise, so yeah, you gotta sit here and spin the arm. Fortunately, it's a nice long arm, moves very readily. Now these jaws, this is 13 and 3 quarters by five inches tall. One of the arms here on the front here moves this front plate. So in the case of this leg that's tapered, let me put it here in this position here so that you can see the taper. As I go to close this, Normally this would be a really awkward piece to clamp up due to the taper. So what you can do is you can move this and the front face changes its position. So by doing that it's very easy for you to just keep on moving it up and then actually I got really lucky and got that pretty much first try. Now I know we've all done that trick where we cut the taper and you keep the off cut so you can use it to help square it up but this is going to give you a much better grip straight with the uh, vise. And also, the other trick doesn't really work well if after you've done that initial cut, you take a spoke shave and you start adjusting the form. Then you're not going to get as good of a match. So this rotates the front so that we can get it to be out of parallel if we need to when we're dealing with the taper. One of the other things that you can do with this very easily is sometimes you don't want to deal with this vise being a full 13 and 3 quarter wide. You might only want the 5 inch wide. There's an arm down here that if I release this arm, I can now rotate this and bring it up. Of course, I don't have to bring it all the way to 90. I could leave it there or push it further, whichever way happens to work. And then you can lock it back into place, just a simple cam. So what they've also done is they've placed a smaller jaw on the bottom. So if we rotate this all the way around, now I have this narrower jaw here, about two and a half inches wide. And that's actually what I used when I was doing some of the planing here for the top portion of this. Now, since I've already done the planing and done the glue up, it's a little more awkward to put in here. For doing the planing, I did it like this, and I was using just a compass plane in order to get this nice and rounded and smooth. Now, that's not the only degree of freedom that you have with this. There's another lever here in the back. No. We can tilt this up. Now, you don't have to bring it all the way up. You could bring it down to a part height here. And the other degrees are still available. So we could sit here, we could take this, and we can rotate this around. So we can pretty much put this vice face wherever we need it. Of course, you know whether this is useful for you or not all depends on the types of projects that you do. Now the vice does have a very sturdy screw here in the middle. It's a square plate so that everything stays registered together very well. It gives you about two inches down before you hit that top part. Now this comes with four dogs and they come with a spring. So with these four holes here, we can pretty much put these dogs wherever we'd like at whatever height. And something like this could be useful if you're holding something that's say round or oblong. You could also use it on something even as round as this where it's going to be able to pinch it on the two dogs here on the front and the two dogs on the back. Now these dogs are reversible 
in that we have a square-ish top here where it's got this taper, but we also have a side here that's round. So you could place the round side in instead. That would actually be the best way of grabbing something that's got a small curve like this on it. Now this other plate here is used for some more specialized clamping. What it'll do is it will fit into a hole that we have here on this back plate. It's only on this side and there's a small screw that you use to lock it in. So basically you're going to just insert this plate and then attach the screw. So you can see that this plate is just free floating but it's just not allowed to fall out. There's a small groove on this face that the ridge that's of this plate will fit in so now it can rotate very easily. So in essence you'd be able to put something here that had a very strong taper. You could either put a wedge in this way or a wedge in from the other side. So this will help handle the case where the faces aren't flat and you them clamped in this orientation. And of course that doesn't prevent you from moving the front face and making that rotate. Now this plate here is bored for some holes so that you could easily attach an auxiliary face if you wanted to. These faces here on this side are four holes that you can see partly here is it's an eyelet hole so you're going to be able to put a screw into it and then you're going to slide the thing over. So you can make some auxiliary faces that go on this side very easily and of course if this side is the wrong side for you because you want to do something over here it's very easy to rotate this whole thing around and you could bring that over to this side. Now I'm not going to say that the installation is like a 10 minute job. It certainly is not especially because of the way that I had things in my bench. But it does come with some pretty good instructions. It comes with a very simple pattern that you can just put on the edge of your bench and for the most part you have everything that you need to cut it out and route out the recess. So now let me get the gunstock vise and we're going to take a look at that. So this is the gunstock vise. It's also from Woodcraft. It mounts very easily to your bench. It's got a three quarter inch diameter rod. Now the screw that goes through the bench is very long and it's got another piece almost like this on the bottom in order to tighten it down. One thing I noticed is that the threads stop a fair distance away from the bottom of this vise. So what ends up happening is for me, I ended up taking a two by four and putting a three quarter inch hole through it. So I use it as a spacer. So this one is also not a quick release. So you're just gonna have to turn it, but it has a fairly coarse Acme thread on here. Very nice Acme thread actually. It turns very cleanly. And you can get this open to about five and three quarter inches in opening. Now the whole thing pivots up here pretty nicely, pretty easily. These heads here individually pivot on their own. There's nothing to lock them into place other than just when they grab something. So this weekend when I was working on these legs, I used this pattern maker's vise for doing the compass plane for the outside here. And then for the inside, I was doing a scraping in order to scrape away some of the little bumps that you get from doing a bent lamination. So for that, I simply put it in here. And with these rubber pads, it's got just a fantastic grip. It's not going anywhere, even though this is also tapered and tapered a bit on the sides. So then with this, it was very easy to take the scraper and scrape both directions, swinging it around. Now, could I have done this for the compass plane? Sure could have. I could have just backed this out and gone right like that, and I could have used the compass plane. So this vise here would have worked just fine for this project here. And it can also hang on to these tapered legs. Simply because of the way that these will swivel, they're going to swivel until they match the angle that's presented by the, the part that's being clamped. So this would also work very well when this was in separate pieces for me to clean up these sides with different spoke shaves, which was actually done quite a while ago. <laughs> and this has been sitting on the side for a while now. So in the case of this project, dealing with these legs, the tapers, some curves and things like that, it turns out that this vise here would have worked very well. Now this one here just has a little bit of a worse time dealing with the curves like that. If I wanted to clamp that curve in place, whereas this one here with those pegs makes that a little bit easier. But certainly you can see these are wooden jaws and there's just some simple screws that go in here. It'd be very easy to create some custom jaws for that. Or for that matter, with these large plates that we have here, they're fairly big. You could also do something as simple as boring some quarter inch holes in two different places here and then two different places there and then just using some of those Miller dowels that are a quarter inch in diameter. So you can pop those in there and then you would clamp this from the top and then the Miller dowels would push into it or use a domino if you wanted to plow two dominoes in there. Same type of deal. So this one here is very, very easily modified and kind of DIY solution for some jaw faces that are very easily done. So this is a really nice thing about this one as well. Now the price differences, again, this one here clocks in just under 300. This one here is currently running for about 135. So in my case, I purchased these 
way back on Memorial Day, during the Memorial Day sale since that was around the time that I took the classes and I got them on a 15% discount. So depending on the projects that you do, I think these two vices would work really well for you, whether you need both or just one or the other is fine. In my case, when I talked to Michael Fortune, I had shown him the Tim Burton table. Uh, of course, he knew about this project. He's seen Angle Madness, he saw all that, you know, when I mocked it up uh, as parts in here. So he saw the types of things that I'm working on and as well as what will be my no comment number three build. He saw that and I asked him, well, is it one or the other? Which one should I get or should I get both? And he just looked, y you should get both. He said I wouldn't be disappointed and he's right. So that's good. Although he probably looked around and said I could be a little excessive. So there you have it. Just some simple vices, but I know they're on the more expensive side, so not everybody's going to want to just like grab it and give it a go. You want to hear something about it, so I think you'll like it. Now, in my case, I'm going to finish up this table, and one of the things I'm doing with it, just to give you a preview, is on the outside edge here, I'm going to be doing an inlay of copper. So it'll be a copper inlay, and then I'm going to apply some patination chemicals on that. So this is all somewhat a prep for a three-part series I'm doing on doing wire inlays. So uh, that is all in prep for me to do my wire inlays in Angle Madness. So I haven't forgotten that project, I just got away from it. Everybody has a forever project. Did I mention I had Michael Fortune in my shop?